So multiplying fractions are fun because remember you just multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators, right? So if I ask you to multiply 12 over 7 times 21 over 20. You can make things very difficult. You can make things very easy. The choice is yours. So you could do 12 times 21 and get a really big number. And do 7 times 20 and get an even larger number. But then you're just going to have to reduce that mess. So before we do that, and a lot of times I like to write it this way. I like to rewrite this and say, okay, this is 12 times 21. That is not 21. 12 times 21 over 7 times 20. And I look for those common factors. Common factor has to be one in the numerator, one in the denominator. So what's common that you see up here? Anything. 12 and 20 have a common factor of what? Two, but you can go even bigger than that, and you can say four, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite that 12 to be three times four, right? And the 20 is going to be four times five. Now, could I rewrite the 21 in a way that's useful? Yes. How? That's 3 times 7, and of course 7 is just 7. Do you all agree? And again, you don't have to do it exactly this way. There are a lot of different ways for us to show our work. But then I reduce, because what are the common factors that I can reduce out? I can't reduce 3, because th these are multiplied together. That would actually be 9. But the 4s can reduce, because what's 4 divided by 4? 1. Oh, you also have 7 over 7, because 7 divided by 7 is? One. Do you all agree with that? Can you ever cancel side to side? Yeah. No, you can never cancel side to side. It has to be one in the top and one in the bottom. The moment you forget that is the moment you, well, we don't want to talk about that. It's like I have to show you videos. Like, you know, this is why you don't drink and drive. And you see, like, the, the, the footage of, like, wrecked vehicles and blood everywhere. <laughs> Just in case you guys didn't get it. Never mind. It's like, here's why, you don't, here's why you don't want to have unprotected sex. Here's pictures of STDs. And you go, I didn't realize somebody's eye could be that color green. You know? And then you wonder, how did it get in the eye? And then you say, this, this is a little bit too much for a health class. And so you end up with 9 over 5. Right? It's a horrible segue there, but yes, the answer is 9 over 5. Do you all agree with that? Did anybody get that before I got there? Yay! Raise your hand anyway. Not that anybody on YouTube can see it, but yay. You know, the other way we have of doing this, and this is a little bit of a messier way, but this is how I'm sure a lot of you will do this. You may say something like this. 7 goes into 7 once. 7 goes into 21 three times, right? And then you see that 12 and 20 have a common factor of 4. So 4 goes into 12 three times. 4 goes into 20 five times, and you know what? You still end up with the same answer. Nine over five. Do you all agree? Well, multiplication is not that bad, right? You want to make it even funner? Maybe. All right, so if I were to say this, 5 twelfths of 8. You remember, whenever we have the word of here with fractions, what does of mean? Of means what? Of means multiplication. So 5 twelfths of 8 really means 5 twelfths times 8. But we're supposed to be talking about multiplying fractions, but is 8 a fraction? 8's not a fraction, it's an integer, but can you write it as a fraction? Yeah. Easy way to make any whole number a fraction is to do what? Put it over 1, because what is 8 divided by 1? 8, it's still the same thing, we haven't changed anything. Are there common factors, bless you, that we could reduce away before I multiply? Yeah. 
What's the common factor? You could do two, but you could do better than that and do four, right? So what are you reducing here? What numbers are you reducing? The 12 and the 8. So 4 goes into 12 how many times? 4 goes into 8 how many times? 2. So then what's the answer? What does this symbol right here mean? Multiplication. Multiplication. So what's 5 times 2? Over 3 times 1, which is 3. Don't forget that you're multiplying. You'd be amazed at how many times students will think that multiplication all of a sudden becomes addition. And then that becomes kind of awkward for everybody, right? Now, we use fractions like this. Like if I were talking about you know, the students that I have. If I say I have 80 students, but I say 3 fifths of my 80 students, 3 fifths of 80 students are female. Well, my question to you is, well, how many students are female? How would you figure that out? What does three-fifths of 80 mean? Remember, the word of here means what? Multiplication. Multiplication. So when I say three-fifths of 80, that means it's three-fifths times 80, and if it makes you feel better, you say 80 over 1. Now, you know what an appropriate response to this is going to be. This basically means I have 80 total students, but 3 fifths of them are female, which means the number of female students needs to be less than 80, right? Okay. So, is there any kind of reducing I can do here, or should I just go ahead and multiply? I could reduce by a common factor of 5, because how do I know that 5 goes into 80? 16. Now, how do I know that 5 goes into 80? Because this number ends in a 0, right? So 5 goes in here one time. 5 goes into 80 16 times. So do the multiplication here. What's 3 times 16? For some reason, it's one of my favorite numbers. And 1 times 1 is 1. Now, am I going to leave it like this? Am I going to say that 48 over 1 students are female? No. No, I'm going to say that 48 students are female. See, that makes much more sense, right? Now, suppose you did not do it this way. What if you had said, you know what, I don't see that 5 goes into 80 or 3. What's 3 times 80? Okay, I'll make it easier for you. What's 3 times 8? That's 24. Add on the 0. 5 times 1 is 5. <coughs> and now you have a division problem. And I know how much you guys love doing long division. I'm going to restrain myself since this is going on YouTube. What's 240 divided by 5? It should be 48, right? And if you are not sure, you can just do this fantastic thing called long division because 5 going into 240, 5 doesn't go into 2, but it goes into 24 four times with the remainder of 4. And then 5 goes into 40 eight times. Don't get lazy on me. The remainder is 0. Your answer, the quotient, is right here. So you still get 48. But I like to work with the smaller numbers. I don't want to multiply and get really big numbers that I then have to reduce.